the Raspberry Pi OpenCV project that I've done recently, and I'll put a link in the description and on the screen, I've printed this nice case for the camera. The only thing with it is that once I put it inside and pop this at the back, it makes this connector here just pop out of place and disconnect the camera from the actual PCB. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue, keep it inside, probably remove these wings here and glue this at the back. So that's one thing with the camera. The other thing is that I ordered a fan since the Raspberry Pi 4 tends to get really hot. And uh, the thing is that I don't want to have the fan running constantly. So I'm going to write a program that is going to get the temperature of the core out of the OS and then out of that make a decision if to switch it on or switch it off. So let's go to work. I remember there is a simple way of getting the temperature and I was right. It's this command. So if I put it in the terminal, as you can see I'm getting the temperature which is 45 degrees Celsius. Now what I did is just... I. The measure temperature, what it does, it just takes it and then just trims everything out of it and returning it as a float. And what I do in my loop is I just get the temperature, making sure if it's over the threshold temperature, which is currently 50, I'm switching on the GPIO, which is connected to an NPN transistor, and that in return operates the fan. And if the temperature is below, I just switch it to low and there it switches off the fan. And that's all, there's a few prints here, and it worked just wonderful. So uh, let's run it here, see it working, and I'll show you on the bench. So now all I need to do is to run sudo python for the temp control py, and you can see it measures every 30 seconds, and just send it to sleep for 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds there will be a measurement here, and if it will be over 50, which is this value, it will switch on the fan. Now let's go see it on the back. So here is the setup. There's a lot of wires and I'll explain. This goes to 5 volt and ground, that's so we can actually power the fan. This goes to the GPIO that is down here. Now, the GPIO through a resistor switch on an NPN S8050 resistor. That, that will give us the ground and I switch on the LED and the fan as well and it's getting the 5 volt from here. Now one important added thing is of course a flyback current diode here so when the fan stop we don't kill anything in our system. So I'm gonna change the temperature a little bit in the software so it will make the fan run faster or earlier and yes, I'll show you how it works. So I changed temperature threshold to be 45 degrees as, as you can see now the fan got switched on and the LED as well. And my guess will be within 30 seconds, which is the time it takes to check the temperature again, it will switch it off because it's going to drop below 45 due to the fan cooling things down. So we're going to wait a little bit, I'm going to make fast forward. And as you can see, it got switched off. Brilliant, now I got to solder all of this and think of a clever way to put it on top of here. And as I mentioned before, I've glued the camera and I'm going to make some way of making a box, maybe a 3D print, something that will hold this and this one on top of the other somewhere around here. So, let's go solder. Done soldering. Now I decided to add one more feature, which is a switch. And the reason for the switch is that I want to be able to turn on the fan without having to run the software. So I got two grounds. One is connected directly to the ground. If I connect this, you can see the fan is working. And the same goes for the ground that comes out of the NPN. And if I touch it, since the software is running, it's, it's, it runs the fan. Those two wires will go to an LED. So then my next step is to create a box that will sit here and will be the base of this as well. I'm going to put it on the top. Uh, well, let's go try and make, some, make a box for this. Fresh out of the printer. I'll take it up and see if it matches the PCB. Almost. <laughs> My printer isn't that great when it comes to um, scales and um, um, tolerances, so it doesn't fit in. I need to add, I don't know, just a little bit more. And also I probably need to put support when I print it out because it's all messed up here. I did have filament issues, so that could be it. 
But all in all, it's exactly what I wanted. This will go here. This will go inside. This connects here. The fan. Oh, I have to check the fan. I didn't check that. Oh, goes well inside. Brilliant. And then this will be seated here. I'll probably just make two pegs that this will be get will sit on. Or I'll just make two holes and or indent. I don't know. I'll make something here to mount it to. And then if I want to remove, I can always remove just the camera and leaving the base here. Well, back to Fusion 360. PCB fits just right, and you can see the mount is just everything is perfect here, but I created Two pegs, those two little things. <laughs> those two little things. And one I snap, tried to get this off the uh, 3D printer. And the other one, when I snap this in and try to take it out. So this won't work. And I'm now just debating between just making a raised platform or with this size and then making two, uh, two holes for a screw. Or uh, just glue this like this here and get it over with. I'll think about it, I'll have to print another one anyway because I'm going to make it a little bit taller and I have to make um, a cover for this and have a place for the uh, switch and the LED. Wow, that was a hard one. I had endless problems with the printer, it kept failing, um, but I fixed it and I finally managed to print the part about eight trials and, and, and kept on failing and stopping in the middle. Now I have extended the height here so I can have a cover with the uh, switch in it without it touching anything inside. An LED as well, probably use a three millimeters and not a five millimeters. And as you can see, I made a raised platform here, used two metal screws and uh, attached the camera to the base. So I'm really happy with this result. Um, so yeah, now I need to create the cover that will go on top. It took a few trials, as you can see, to get the size of the hole just right for the, for the switch. And an LED here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the LED to the board. And then I'm going to cut it into size, make sure it fits in. And then I need to glue the switch into place, um, solder the three wires that goes to it, and then I'll probably glue the LED into place. And then I'll probably just put a few drops of uh, hot glue in the bottom, drop this in and have the cover on top of it. The cover should go like this. Well, soldering first. Done soldering. It's a bit tight in there. And um, what I need to do now is, of course, to run a test before I uh, close it in the box. So I'm going to connect everything up, fire up the Raspberry Pi, and uh, test it. And if it's all fine, I'm just going to put a bit of a hot glue in the bottom, push it in. The case holds tight against the box itself. Well, let's fire it up and start it up. I like when it happens while trying to work it out. Everything just failed. And I think it's all to do with this um, honest. Um, the pins inside here got loose. I added hot glue and I guess they were not. Anyway, I need to rebuild this part. And as you can see, now it's working. If I switch this on and if I switch the software, this side is working as well. So I'm going to create a new honest for it. I think I might shorten this, but maybe later. And uh, yeah, box it and get it to work. All in place and working well. <laughs> I've uh, created a new harness for here. Well, next step is, as I said before, is to put this into the box and glue it in. All in place, working great. I'm super happy with the result. The last thing I need to do is to make sure that the Python script runs on the load of the Raspberry so it will kick in automatically and I'm done. So the last thing we have to do is just make adjustment to the RC local and add this line to the end of it and this will automatically run the script. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you haven't done it by now, please subscribe, give a thumbs up or leave a comment. See you next time.